This is Map 152, Section 1 1.2, or this is Part 2 of a three-part uh, lecture series on this. And we are going to keep digging into this relationship between the summation and this uh, integral. This S, big S, uh, also like implies uh, a summation or it implies a sum. So we, uh, we've talked about how these, you can write them in two different ways, this way and this way. We're going to keep thinking about that a little bit, dig into a little more detail here. Um, two things I want you to remember is that that change in X, that is like the width. Remember what we're doing is we're doing uh, approximations with rectangles. So that, that change in X is the base of one of the, of one of the rectangles. And the way that we can get its width is the interval, uh, how far is it from B to A, divided by N, the number of partitions we're going to do. And again, this idea of the limit let N go to infinity, this is the idea that we're letting there be uh, an infinite number of rectangles or making more and more so it becomes more and more accurate. Now, this is a general X sub I. That's what that asterisk uh, implies. But I want to emphasize that. Um, it's a little different on if we're coming from the left side or the right side. Like if we're coming from the left side or the right side, we've already talked about the right side a little bit. This is the same for both of them. And that change in X is always this. Now, if we're coming from the right side, um, we talked about this a little bit last time. This would be, this is where A is at, goes all the way out to B. And then we have these partitions, right? X sub 0, X sub 1, X sub 2, X sub 3 on all the way up to x sub n. i that we're at, like when i is 1, we're at x sub 1. Uh, when i is 2, we're at x sub 2. If we're doing right hand, we're doing these right hand um, approximations. So if this is the case, um, x sub i is equal to a, where we started, plus that change in x, however many times we've done it. Right, like x sub 0 is a, um, they're at the same spot. If, if we're at x sub 1, this i is a 1. We've gone over one of these changes in x. If we're at x sub 2, from this a spot, we've gone over two of them. So there's our, there's our right-hand approximation. Now for the left-hand approximation, I want you to uh, realize that it's actually, yeah, let's do that pen. The left hand, it's actually these points. Right, we're using that front, that leading left edge for it. So our first term, we've got our x sub i. Our first term is x sub zero, but we still want it to grow by this. So uh, what we'll say for this is it's still a, but it's going to be plus i minus one times the change in x. So our first term when i is one, this is a zero, so x sub one is just a. And at our second term, i is 2, 2 minus 1 is 1. We've only gone over 1 from, uh, from a. We've only gone over that, that change in x1 from a. So there's a difference between those two for specifying left or right. So thinking about that, I want us to um, do a little bit of practice of trying to write something that's in this form in that form. But I'm not going to give you explicitly the, the bound, the A and B, the lower bound and the upper bounds. We're going to have to figure it out from the way that it's written. And we'll use these formulas to get there. So let me get, let me get some things written down, and then we'll jump in there. And what we're going to do with these is we're going to try to write them as an integral um, as n goes to infinity, as, that, as we have that limit of, of n growing to infinity. So we're going to try and write these as integrals. So let's take a look at this first one. This is a left-handed sum. So as we know on any of these, their change of x is always going to be uh, whatever that is. And notice change in x is here. And then our, um, our x sub i is going to be, it's going to have an i minus 1 in it. So let's think about that for a sec. So one thing I notice on this one, let's zoom in a little bit. One thing I notice on this is I have this constant out here. And really, this is my change in x. I'm, if, I, if I tuck that back into here, it still is the same summation. You know, we can take those things that don't have an I's in them out. Um, and now this is in 
this form where we have some function of x sub i times the change in x. So let's think about what the change in x is. First, the change in x is 3 over n. So we know just from this format that our change in x is 3 over n. That's interesting. That uh, change in x is b minus a over n. So we know that b minus a is 3. So these have this, this space of uh, 3 in them. That distance from a to b is going to be 3. All right, so that's helpful. The other thing we know is our x sub i is whatever the first term is plus um, 1 minus, I'm sorry, i minus 1 times the change in x. Well, we know what the change in x is. It's 3 over n. So let's replace this with 3 over n. I have that 3 over n times i minus 1. This is that. Right, it's just 3 times i minus 1 over n. So this is this. So a plus that has to be this. It looks like a must be 0. There would be a number out here if it wasn't. So it looks like I have all my pieces. I know that a is 0. So I know the lower bound is 0. b minus a is 3. Right, That's the distance, so it must go up to 3. My function is just what my inputs are. So x and then dx. So there it is from a left-hand side. So let's look at this right-hand one, then this next right-hand one. I'm going to try to move all this stuff down real quick. All right, so this is a right-hand one. So looking at the right-hand one, I still know my change in x is always, uh, always what it's going to be. And I know that my x sub i is just a plus i times change in x. So there's my change in x. I'm going to tuck that back in there just so it looks a little more familiar to me. So think about this form. This is some function of xi. And this one is my change in x. So I know my change in x, 5 over n, which means that b minus a must be 5. So I've got this, this spread of 5 from my lower bound to my upper bound. I also know that x sub i on the right-hand one is a, my first term, plus i times my change in x. And my change in x, well, it's 5 over n. And i times 5 over n is the same as 5 times i over n. Right? Like, these are the same thing. So it looks like, since this is my function, something like this, a must be 7. So now I have all my pieces that I need. I know my lower bound is 7. I know my range is 5, so it's going to go up 5 from 7. Eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. This is just xi, so of x, d of x. Cool. One more, one more example like this. Uh, this is a right-hand one. I could take that 1 over n and tuck it in here, so I think I'll do that. I'll just go like this. And since it's a right-hand one, I know that my change in x, well, this is the same for both of them. It's this, b over a over n. So b over uh, b minus a is 1. So I've got this distance of 1 in here. I know that uh, my xi, since it's a right-hand one, is a plus i uh, change in x. So a plus i change in x. But I know what my change of x is. It's 1 over n. So if I look at this, I've got it here, and I've got it here. So it looks like a must be 3. And so if I plug in x sub i back in for this, I can see that my function uh, is going to start at 3. It has this, this uh, interval of 1, this spread of 1. Uh, so it's, that should be plus 1. So that's a 4. And then notice what I have is that x sub i here multiplied by a sine cubed of x sub i uh, dx. And there it is. Again, I've, I've rewritten it. So there's that idea for those. Uh, take your time with those. Um, they, they can take a little while to feel comfortable with, but uh, dig on in. And there is a second piece I want to talk about. That's some properties of these definite integrals. 
And they're the same properties as we saw with summations. For example, well, here's the first one. Notice my lower bound is A and my upper bound is A. So that means it's just basically a line. It would have no area. So that's a zero. This next one brings some direction in. Notice this says my lower bound is B and my upper bound is A. Like it could be that I was, if they're set like this, that's going this way. It would be the same as negating it and then switching them, right? the negative A to B. Lots of symbols here, but all this is saying is if I'm adding two different functions on the inside of the integral, I can break it into two integrals uh, and then add them together. So I, I could add the functions together and then integrate, or I can integrate the pieces and then add those integrals together. It works for subtraction too, so I'll say uh, plus or minus on this. Two more I want to throw in here. If I have some constant in here multiplied by this, some number that's not doesn't have anything to do with x, I can take it out and then take the integral and multiply by it. So like if this was a five, it'd be five times the function. I could take the integral that way, or I could take the five out, uh, take the integral of that function, and then distribute the five in. And left. And this just says, looks, everything's the same, except this goes from A to B, and that's equal to the integral from A to C plus the integral from C to B. So in other words, you can you can break up that interval into pieces and just integrate it over uh, over smaller smaller pieces of values. So thinking about those, we're not actually going to like compute integrals, but we'll do some computation with them and with these rules. So let me get, I'm going to write a couple exercises up here and then we will, uh, and some definitions and we'll deal with it. All right, let's dig on in. So notice up here on these, these top parts, these are just definitions. Uh, I have these two functions, f of x and g of x. And I know the integral from zero to eight of f of x is 10. This just tells me that like that's equal to 10. Zero to five of that is, is five. Zero to five of g is negative two. Five to eight of g is six. And then I'm gonna use that information to figure out these ones. So the interval from uh, five to eight of f of f of x, and then you know integrated with relation to x. Well, I don't have a five to eight up here, but I have a zero to eight and I have a zero to five. So what I could do is I could say, how about it's the same, I know that this minus that, if I take this and I subtract off that part of the interval, it should be the same as, uh, as that, right? That's how I could get to that. But I know the value of this is 10, and I know the value of this is five, so that must be a five. Next one, interval from zero to five of f of x plus g of x, yes. Uh, well, I have it for each of them separately. So you can see that I could just, the answer is going to be 5 plus negative 2. It's going to be 3. Uh, technically, if I write it out, I would show that I'm doing this interval, the integral plus this integral. This one is 5. This one is negative 2. So the answer is 3. Uh, okay, 0 to 8 of g of x. Well, I know. 0 to 5 of g to x, and I know 5 to 8. So if I add those together, that would give me the 0 to 8. So it should be negative 2 plus 6, which is 4. If I write this out, I'd say I know that uh, this is equal to those two added together, 0 to 5 and then 5 to 8 combines to that. So 0 to 5 is negative 2. We know the answer. 5 to 8 is 6. So that should be a negative 4. And then on this last one, uh, the integral from 0 to 8 of 3 times f of x minus 2 times g of x, and then again relative to x. So let's see. First off, that subtraction. I could split up that subtraction, and you probably won't do all these steps, but I just want to be very thorough about this just to show the properties that I'm using. And then notice I have a constant in here. I could pull that constant out. Same thing with that two, I could pull that out. And then both of these values I know, uh, zero to eight of f of x is 10. So this would be three times 10 
minus 2 times the 0 to 8 was an earlier problem that I did. This one, negative. So 30 plus 8, right? Negative times a negative. That should be 38. All right. So uh, on the homework assignment, on the, the practice problems, I'm going to have you do some of these. I'm going to have you do some of these as well. Again, take your time. If you have any questions, post them or message me with them.